Hi all, this is Dirk Koenig from Canoe, and I'm so excited about the upcoming Java One that I'd like to share with you what kind of talks I'm going to present. The first one will be uh, Stop or my Duke will shoot. And as you guessed, there is some shooting involved. What kind of shooting? Actually, we will fire some missiles. And if you ask yourself what kind of missiles that's going to be, it's these here. Um, yeah, you see? Uh, it's a desktop missile launcher, and it will only fire um, styrofoam rockets. But um, anyway, this kind of control is interesting because it relates to the Internet of Things. Um, it's, it's a stand-in, a representative of um, any kind of device that you would like to include. Um, and you need to control it in the typical ways that you write Java applications from the server side with the help of OpenDolphin, which as it turns out is um, pretty well fit, a pretty good fit for an application architecture for the Internet of Things. Now, these devices, uh, they don't run Java. They are external devices. And so OpenDolphin is not natively installed on that device, but it can be. And another second demo in that very same talk will show you the Tesla. Uh, the Tesla is a very short, micro, a very small microcontroller, which uh, runs JavaScript natively and therefore can also execute OpenDolphin in the uh, variant of OpenDolphin JavaScript. And so it integrates na uh, seamlessly with your server-side application logic. And even more in the talk, Stop or My Will Shoot, we will also try to make an experiment with the whole audience where everyone in the audience is part of that experiment. We will try to steer the, uh, the rocket launcher to the opposite side of the room where the other ones are sitting. So with the help of your smartphone, which serves as a thing in the Internet of Things, we will on the server side figure out who has the better options of, of steering this. And then OpenDolphin logic will steer it in the, in the respective direction. And we can uh, then fire the missiles, if possible, to the opposite side of the room. We will see how that works. <laughs> Uh, anyway, these kind of demos are, are um, have a very high chance of failing um, and they're going to be spectacular either way. So if you want to see me either succeeding or failing spectacularly, this talk is for you. This will be um, last day of September, that is the Tuesday, from 12.30 to 13.30 in the Continental Ballroom 4 in the Hilton Hotel. Um, the Continental Ballroom is one of the bigger rooms, so I expect there's going to be like 400 seats or so. Uh, if the room would be full, that would be much more impressive for the experiment. So uh, please show up. If you're interested in Open Dolphin in general, then at the very morning from 8.30, there is a, a two-hour tutorial where you can learn how to program against presentation models, and this is what we do in the then trailing um, Stop or My Duke Will Shoot talk. There's, uh, then Open Dolphin will have a third appearance, which is on Thursday, where we, uh, yes, Thursday, um, one o'clock in the afternoon, where we will explore how you can write JavaFX applications with the help of Open Dolphin that run in the cloud. Because with this kind of structure, with this um, application architecture that OpenDolphin has, you can have desktop applications running in the cloud and having the cloud running on your desktop, which is pretty cool, I hope. Um, this um, has been like the three talks about OpenDolphin, and OpenDolphin will also have some more appearances in other talks other speakers, mainly, for example, in the JavaFX ecosystem talk with um, Jim Weaver and Hendrik Evers, and some more as well, as I guess. So this has been the open Dolphin topic. There's a second topic that is dear to my heart currently in um, that are going to present at Java 1, 
and that is functional programming. But as I would claim, functional programming done right. And that means we, we need some kind of language that goes beyond what you currently know from functional features of Java in the first place, and then Groovy, Scala, Clojure, and, and others. Even JavaScript is, um, is very functional. But we need something that goes beyond that and reaches the realm of mathematical soundness that you find in languages like Haskell, which are kind of difficult to bring to the Java virtual machine. But there is a currently new attempt of doing this, and it's called Frege, the Frege language. By the way, Frege is a little bit difficult to pronounce if you're English, and uh, if you're English, you're, um, you are allowed to call that uh, freaky if you want to. <laughs> so this will be, there will be a one hour talk on uh, Wednesday, uh, half past 11 in Yosemite BC. And I will explain why, why this approach is so different from, fundamentally different from all the other approaches to functional programming that you have seen so far on the JVM. And there is um, a second appearance of Frege in the Emerging Languages Bowl, uh, the Big League Challenge, where we compare various approaches uh, against each other. That is the Continental Ballroom 789 in, uh, in the afternoon, 3 o'clock p.m. So I hope you, uh, you are as excited as I am and looking forward to Java 1. I hope to see you there. If you, you can find me the whole week, uh, please, if you have any questions, if you have anything that you would like to discuss, approach me directly. Um, I will be the one wearing the, the black shirt with the big dolphin on the back. So uh, I hope to see you there.